Welcome to our lecture online and here we're going to take a look and see how we can find the binomial distribution when n is a large number. Now we're going to start with an example where n is 16. That's not extremely large. We could easily encounter a problem where n is equal to 1,000. Of course, when n equals to 1,000, you start looking at equations like this with 1,000 factorial. You know you're in a lot of trouble. You're going to have a really tough time trying to figure out what the binomial distribution looks like for something with very large numbers for n, meaning a lots of trials. So even with 16, this will be quite a daunting effort. And so we're going to show you first an example of what it looks like to calculate all the various things, such as the probability for a certain number of occurrences or a certain number of successes. And we're also going to calculate the expected value of the variance and the standard deviation. And of course, in this case, we're going to say let m equals to 8. So we're going to find the probability with eight successes. All right, so let's plug that into our equation. Well, first of all, let's calculate these three numbers right here because they're very easy to calculate. So the expected value is n, which is 16, times the probability of success, which is 0 0.5, and that's equal to eight. So the expected value, or the value that is most probable to occur, is n equals eight. So we're going to go ahead and let m equals eight being eight successes, which is the most prominent or the most likely event to occur. Then the variance is going to be equal to n, which is 16, times p, which is 0 0.5, times q, which is also 0 0.5, so that's equal to 4. So you have a variance of 4, which means it's not a very tight distribution relative to the average value. If it's half the average value, then it's not a very tight distribution. Looking for the standard deviation, that would be equal to the square root of the variance, which is equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to, I think it's about 2 point, no, it's still, oh, wait a minute. What am I doing? <laughs> the square root of 4, of course, is 2. I definitely don't need a calculator for that. All right, so which means that 99.7% of all the values would fall plus or minus, within plus or minus 3 sigma, which would mean between uh, 8 plus 6 is 14, 8 minus 6 is 2. So almost all the values should lie between m equals 2 and m equals 14. All right, so when you think about trying to graph what that probably looks like, It'll probably look something like this, where the expected value is 8, and you expect uh, almost down to 0 when you get down to 2, and almost down to 0 when you get to 14, because this is plus 3 sigma, and this is minus 3 sigma. So that should contain about 99.7% of the values. Now, of course, notice that in this binomial distribution, we actually have discrete values, and the curve that I drew, of course, is not one with discrete values, but at least it shows you the proximal shape of that, of those discrete values, because when you have a whole bunch of triangles or like rectangles that are closely spaced together, you can see that it begins to look more and more like a Gaussian or a normal distribution curve like that. Okay, so now let's find the probability of eight successes. <clears throat> so in this case, the probability of eight successes, we're going to use this equation right there. <clears throat> Excuse me, the probability of eight is equal to n factorial, which is 16 factorial, divided by eight factorial, divided by eight factorial, times the probability with the 0 0.5 to the eight power, and <clears throat> 0 0.5 to the eight power. So this is equal to 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 times 11, skipped 11 here, times 10 times 9, because 16 factorial divided by 8 factorial leaves you these numbers on top, and then we still have an 8 factorial in the denominator, so 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and that would be times 0 0.5 to the 16th power, because if the base are the same and multiplying, we simply add exponents. So simplifying this a little bit more, 8 and 2 go into 16, 1, so that cancels that out. <clears throat> Let's see here, we have a 7 and 14, that would be a 2. A 6 and 12, that would be a 2 as well. And 5 and 10, that would be a 2. And the 3 and the 9, that would be a 3. And then I have a 4 here, we cancel out these 2s. All right, now I'm ready to kind of simplify it a little bit more. So we have 15 multiplied times everything in the denominator is canceled. So we have a 13. And what else? I have an 11. And I have a 2 and a 3. And then times 0 0.5 raised to the 16 power. All right, <clears throat> let's see what that's equal to. 0 0.5 
raised to the 16 power, that's a pretty small number. Then we multiply times 15, times 13, times 11, and times 6, and we get a probability of 0 0.196. So the probability at the value that gives you the highest probability, in other words, eight successes, the probability is uh, 0 0.196. 196 and that would of course be for that middle value right there okay so that's the value that we get by actually using the equation now you can imagine of course that when the number n becomes pretty large 50 100 a thousand you're going to have a really tough time solving the problem like this so on the next video we're going to show you an approximation of how to obtain the same result or very similar result very close approximation to the actual value by using a much clever a very clever method to figure that out so let's go to the next video and see how we can approximate the very same thing but in a much simpler manner